who has the word of the Lord for this morning? Something just in your spirit to release. Hallelujah. And I kept hearing that time was being created out of our worship. That as we worship together, this day is being created out of our worship. I kept hearing God say that we have to see what He's saying. And as we see what He's saying, I was just seeing everybody's arms lifted up and giving God the glory. But I kept hearing the Lord say that this is a new place. Uh, this place here is a place of launching. I heard the Lord say that He is launching us through our worship. Yeah. That as we lift our hands, He is taking us into the now future. We are no longer in the present when we worship. We are in the future. And everything that you need is in that place. And God says it shall manifest in this place that we are in now. Don't you know that this is a season of change for you? That it's not a coincidence that you've been brought here on this day. Some came last night, but this day God said he's manifested before you on your behalf. To do greater works in the earth. Greater works, greater works, greater works. That's what I'm hearing. Greater works, new now, future. New now. New now, the very essence of creation is released in this place this morning. The very essence of God's creation is released upon you as you worship him. You shall see what he says and you will say what he does. Amen. 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 Apostle Hector. Father, I thank you for the release of your anointing this morning, Lord. Father, even as we align and we come close to you, Father. Father, we thank you that this is the season of alignment. And I hear the Lord say that even now I'm bringing even the remnant to come forth with new blueprint. For the Lord says, I've given you strength to step into the dimension of my spirit. And the Lord says, even now I will bring revelation and I will bring increase wave after wave. Wave after wave, the Lord says that you've come through and even through the pressure and even through the fire. But the Lord says as you come in, the Lord says I'm drawing you close to me. This is the season where I will commune with you, you will commune with me, and I will bring into manifestation that which I desire. For the Lord says, I'm removing even the, the templates and the patterns of the past. For the Lord says, I'm giving you new blueprints. For there's a freedom in my people. For the Lord says, even now there will be a multiplication. There's a spark. There's a spark. I'm igniting something new, says the Lord. I'm igniting it in you. For the Lord says, even now, more than ever before, the Lord says, I will open your eyes wide. Yes. But step in. Be very courageous in this season, says the Lord. Be very courageous for the Lord says that I will bring you over to the other side, says the Lord. Yes. Amen. 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 And I hear the Lord say, women, I have been waiting for you. I've been waiting for people that would allow me to release and move freedom for the name of this place displays what I desire to do in this hour. I desire a people that I can release my glory through. I desire a people that would surrender unto me. Know that this is an hour where I'm going to move freely through my people. A people that would surrender. A people that was waiting in consecration. For this is a place where I will move freely through you, said the Lord. So know in this hour, I'm calling you out and I'm closer. I'm calling you dear to me. I'm calling you closer. Some of you are walking in fear, but know that the freedom of the Lord is in this place, and I desire people that would raise their hands in worship, and know that my dew shall rest upon your head, for great revelation is going to be released to the remnant. Great glory is going to be released to the remnant. I have been looking for you, says the Lord. I have been looking for a remnant that I could use freely in this hour, says God. Yes. Yeah, Lord. And when the uh, apostle 
Tiffany was worshiping just a chance a moment. I saw the angels of the Lord uh, being released as she began to talk about battle. And I believe that the Spirit of God is releasing even not only just for uh, this year, but for these strategies, for these assignments. He's releasing new angels. The book of Genesis comes to my mind. And Jacob has this visitation where he saw a ladder. And the ladder at the top reaches to the heavens and the bottom to the earth. And he saw angels ascending and angels descending. And I believe by the Spirit of God that there are angels that are ascending. There are angels that have been with you in the past season with past assignments and with old strategies. They're ascending, but then there are new angels that are required that are descending, coming down the ladder of heaven. And I believe that as we leave this place, the Father says, we need to engage our heavenly hosts. I'll give you partners in the invisible realm, uh, but they will be made more visible even in these days. Uh, for you will see even that I've released new angels. Uh, and many of you, the Lord says, as you heard it, uh, your eyes will begin to open and you'll begin to see uh, angelic assistance uh, like never before. Uh, and breakthrough in territories and breakthrough in your homes uh, and breakthrough in your families shall be your portion. Uh, but there will be an unusual the occurrence of angelic visitations. Many of you will be worshiping and you will begin to sense a strange, unusual presence. And the Lord says you will not be fearful, but you will know that I'm releasing even my angels. And so the Lord says throughout this year, 2022, I'm sending even angels before you. And you will know that I commissioned you angels to assist you in your assignments. And be not fearful and be not worried, because there are angels that are going with you. And I'm telling you, these angels are going to help you break through places of restriction and resistance. And the Father says there will be no lids, there will be no labels, and there will be no limitations. But there will be open heavens, and these angels will hearken to the words of my word.
something in your favor. For the Lord is going to do things. Come on, Epic. This is a corporate thing, says the Lord. Hallelujah. Come on, just shout out to the Lord right here. Come on, shout, shout. Come on, shout, 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 shout.
uh, is really a strong, of course, uh, part of Epic is the nations. And many of you know that you know I've been to 95 nations since uh, 1985, preaching the gospel around the world. Many of those made nations many times. Um, that equates to almost now 10 million miles around the planet. That's the equivalent of 200, 280 times around planet Earth, the equivalent of 14 times to the moon and back. So you've heard me say it before, but I'll say it again. The white hair is not old age, it's mileage. It's mileage, y'all. It's mileage, y'all. Hallelujah. And uh, this classic has got a whole lot more mileage left on it. Last time I kicked the tires, Got some more tread on it for some more miles and for some more, you know, uh, nations and uh, and uh, you know, there's no there's no retiring sitting in a you know a rocking chair sipping Merlot at Jerusalem Geriatric Center. <laughs> yeah, you gotta just keep refiring and keep going. I don't think apostles can really ever true apostles can ever really retire. I mean, really retire. I don't think that's. I don't think that's a possibility. But you all know Apostle Melvin Thompson uh, preaching the gospel, and he's been to many other nations, and uh, he oversees churches in the Dominican Republic, uh, and uh, so very much the nations are on his heart. And Apostle Melvin David, uh, he's Indian, right? You're Indian, right? And uh, but uh, he uh, has lived for most of his life in Singapore. And I've known him for, goodness, I think it's 21 years now, about 21 years. Um, his spiritual father, uh, Apostle Supaya, was a good friend of mine that I preached for uh, many, many times. And uh, when he passed away uh, a number of years ago, the Lord just uh, connected us in a father-son relationship. And uh, hallelujah. And it's just been really, really great. And uh, he has a lovely wife uh, in Singapore. And... Uh, the Lord uh, used him for many years as a prophet, and uh, he was doing schools of the prophets in different uh, Asian countries, and uh, but really stepped into his apostleship as we we ordained him as an as an apostle two years ago, right? Two years ago at, at our epic summit, and uh, and he was really stepped into great fullness of his apostleship now and uh, and the fruit of it is incredible and really 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 incredible and so we're just going to take a few moments before our our, our uh, morning speaker uh, apostle Gandhi comes up to minister and just share about the nations we want to share a little bit about what God is doing in apostle Melvin David's life and Melvin by the way is spelled with a Y over here and an I over here right and L-V-Y-N and so I want to encourage you to follow him on Facebook. And uh, But um, uh, uh, he's doing a tremendous work in Taiwan. He went and uh, started doing schools of uh, the prophets there and invited me to come a couple of years ago in 2018 and minister with him in those schools of the prophets. And we had a tremendous, tremendous time. And I really saw the fruit of his ministry firsthand there. And um, what, um, what, what we're going to see is just... Uh, let us know about just a short three-minute video clip and we're going to talk about how how nations can shift because there's something that the Holy Spirit really had him to participate in, to initiate actually, and uh, and uh, uh, that, that shifted uh, the nation of Taiwan in an incredible way. And uh, so would you just take a moment to, uh, to introduce the, the short video clip we're going to see? Before that, that, you know, during worship, when we were, I, I, I can I can stop by telling this. As our prophet Tiffany was saying about the ladder, and my, Melvin was talking about the ladder. This is what I felt in my spirit, and it's so significant what is here. Because it comes from 2 Chronicles chapter 20, verse 22. The Bible says here, and when they begin to sing and praise God, the Lord set an ambush against the people of Ammon, Moab, and Monsir, and who came against Judah. And they were defeated. For the people of Ammon and Moab stood up against the inhabitants of Monsir. 
to utterly destroy and kill themselves. They help to destroy one another. Yes, and so when Judah came into place overlooking, overlooking the wilderness, they looked towards the multitudes and they were all dead bodies fallen on the earth and none escaped. Wow. Jesus. Powerful. Powerful. I, I truly believe that in this season, when you elevate your praise, when you elevate your praise, the power of the magnitude of the manifestation of God is going to increase tremendously. I truly believe that this, like what Apostle Melvin said, unusual things, remarkable things, I truly believe this, is, this season is going to be a release of unusual anointing, unusual strategies, and unusual breakthroughs for all those who trust and who are faithful in His kingdom. And I truly believe that this is the this is a season of the power of two. Even as we have entered into 2022, it's a 2022, and I also believe that because it's two, there is a rising of the number two. All those who have been number two. All those who have been left out, you are the, the, the substitute. Ah. You know, you will not look upon. God is going to lift you up. Yes. This is a season where Joshua has arise. This is a season where Joseph, who was looked down upon, arise. All those who have been looked down upon, you shall rise. Yes. And God is stirring this. God is. I, I also believe that this is the power of two because as our as how Peter and John went to the sanctuary, the blind man was healed. I truly believe the power of two as how the church and Christ comes together. The power of the manifestation of God will come tremendous upon the face of the earth. Amen. And God, God wants to do so, so many things, so many things, everything that is two. When husband and wife come together, your ministry is going to be tremendous. When two will agree, the power of God will manifest tremendous. Everything that comes with two, the two, it's going to be a great outpouring of the Holy Spirit. Agai chapter 2. All, all the numbers two in the Bible. It brings forth a new restoration, a new reformation. And as our Apostle Melvin said, about a resurgence. I have been always talking about the emergence. Emergence. And so, when the emergence arrives together with the resurgence, or when the emerging, emerging resurgence arrives, and it also talks about a merging of the resurgence. God is wanting to merge the resurgence together so that there will be a great impact. There will be a great breakthrough. And this is also a season as out of the bride is the number two. God is going to raise up the voice of the bride in all nations. The bride must come and take its place. The bride must come and take its position. Your voice needs to be heard in the nations. Your voice needs to be vocal. It's not a time anymore to be in the cave of Adullah. It's not a time for us to hide yourself. God is calling you out. And, 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 and this is what God put in my heart. Three things that all those who are called not to stop. Momentum, movement, and manifestation. Don't ever stop these three things. Because the enemy is always awaiting. And this is also going to be a season where the forces of the light and the false comes in between, comes to show which it is like. It's also going to be a season where God is going to raise up men and women to come together to shine His glory upon the face of the earth. And so please do not neglect, ignore the call that is upon your life. Do not worry about your calling. Do not worry about what people say about your calling. I, I, I have been through many years through that. You know, God wants you to know that your calling is yours. And you do not worry about what people say. Because God didn't give a conference call. It was your call. And so do not miss the call of God. 
like this. That's, that's good. That's, let's put your hands together for that if you, if you believe that. Amen. This minute video clip we're going to see is, uh, um, uh, he'll, he'll talk a little bit more about it afterwards. And um, so it is a cruise that, uh, that he'll help organize for prayer uh, for Taiwan. Okay, this is what happened was, I, I, in 2016, as, as the Lord put within me that I'm called to the mountains, islands, and the coastal region, I started praying and I got suddenly pregnant with Taiwan. And I started praying and praying and praying until some people in Taiwan, the intercessors, called some pastors in, in Singapore and said that they saw a vision of an Indian guy coming to Taiwan to bring restoration and, and uniting the pastors together. And so they came around and asking everyone. And so I was no one in, in, in Singapore. You know, I was the second choice. <laughs> so they looked around and they found that I was the one fasting and praying for Taiwan. And so when they came and said to me, are you praying for Taiwan? Can you, can you send us your photo? We want to send you, send them the, 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 your, your photo to show whether you, are you the right one. And so I told them, I, I can't speak Chinese. I can't speak Chinese. And what am I going to go there? I thought I'm supposed to go there for missions or support somebody there. And so what happened? I sent my profile normal picture. The moment I sent, within half an hour, I received a call from the prayer mountain in Taiwan. They said that they saw the exact picture that I sent. And so they said to me, come immediately as soon as possible. And so the day I started praying, I had five visitations of demonic strongholds of Taiwan in my house. And they warned me not to go. And the moment they warned me, I knew that it's a confirmation that I should go. And so when I touched Taiwan, the entire thing shift in my in my atmosphere, in my in my time. Because the day I started my ministry in Taiwan was the day my spiritual father passed on. Wow. Wow. Exact time, 10.40 when I went up the stage, was the time he passed on to heaven. He was promoted to glory. And you know what? The first message that I shared was the same message the Holy Spirit gave him to share on a Sunday. Wow. And that day onwards, the ministry had changed tremendously. And I've been going everywhere. I have seen so many healing miracles taking place suddenly, suddenly. Without, without me going and touching them, people, people get slain. Mm -hmm. Tumor bursts and comes and people get healed. People who are blurred, vision, they get healed. And so I started praying and praying. And praying. I was finding for direction. And so I got connected back to that. You know, 21 years back, <laughs> His message rings in my ear till today. The angel that meshes with the rod. And so that, that, that stirred me. It was a ringing bell always towards me to keep in alignment. And so I came all the way from Singapore, 24,000 miles. Wow. Just to receive the blessing wow. and guidance. Wow. You know, when you make effort, Yes. When you make sacrifice, yes. it's a payback. Yes. Yes. You know, the Bible says, do not lose your confidence that is in the Lord. For great is thy reward. And so the moment I got connected to Apostle Excel, there was a tremendous shift in my life, my marriage, my ministry. And then, because he knows that I am called to the mountainous region and the islands. He also introduced me to guide someone in India, in Nepal. And so I went there as well to go and minister. And God did tremendous thing. Tremendous thing. Like we had meetings for 200, 300 people training them the apostolic and the prophetic, teaching them the present truth. And God showed me to, to, to just pick up 37 people and send them out to three places. And within six months, the church devil. Wow. Church wow. devil. And from six, he became 13 churches wow. within two years. Mm. And, and in all the places, all the places, wow. so many things took place. Jesus. In Taiwan especially, God brought me to bring the pastors together. Yes. You know, today we have 1,200 plus pastors who come quarterly every year Amen. to pray together. Because God put a strong word of 
me to share to them unless we come together. Yes. Regardless of who we are, what denomination. If you want to see the manifestation of God, if you want to see the glory of God, if you want to see the revival of God, if you want to see a breakthrough in the land, we must come together. And so everyone, it, it was a struggle in the beginning. Many of them, they tested me all kinds of things. But God brought us together. Yeah. And when, when, they were, when we were praying, God spoke in my heart saying, As how the Noah ship, the ark, when in the flood, God said to me, that gather everyone in a ship and go around Taiwan for three days, three nights. And so as the Spirit of God was pleading, you know, we needed 19 million Taiwan dollars, which is 680,000 US to book a cruise ship. And it was impossible because we didn't have any money. But you know what? God brought in so many miracles. A wine trader who was going through some depths, he came to us in a prayer meeting, he said to us that if you will pray and God will open doors, I have so, he said he had so much of outstanding, people have not paid him. So he said if he will receive, he will sow some seeds. Within two weeks, he came and gave us a check for 12 million dollars. Wow. Wow. 12 million dollars. And that pumped up our faith. That pumped up our faith. And money started coming. Money started coming. And what happened was in the ship, God told me to gather the sons of the soil, the indigenous people, and reconcile them with the, with the city people. Because we took the land from them. And so we, we gathered, we went and ministered. I am called to the mountain, so I went and ministered to them. And we got 300 people. 300 indigenous people safe and we were training them school of apostolic leadership and apostolic uh, school of prophets we trained them and we brought them into the ship we brought 500 worship leaders and dancers 600 pastors yes. wow yes. A, a total of 1750 people free of charge wow. Wow. all that we wanted them to do is release the blessings upon the nation yes. And so when we did that, you know, the cruise ship always has casino. Yeah. And you know what? Because we took the, the entire cruise, they had to shut down the casino. And the guys in the <laughs> casino were singing Christian songs. <laughs> they wanted the pieces. You know, and so what we did was 24 hours. 24 hours worship. We had 300 chauffeur blowers. We were just blowing the truck for 24 hours, taking God, turns, God, blowing God, God, God. God. And that became a great impact. A great impact. A great impact. And as we were going around the, the cruise, God was showing us what God is doing. And I saw kind of like a fireball kind of thing that is going around Taiwan and bringing cleansing over Taiwan. And I saw the rain of glory coming upon Taiwan. And, 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 and so, before this, before this, let me tell you something. <laughs> the moment we gathered, the moment the other pastors found out that we, we managed to get the sum of money, everyone wanted to join in. Some pastors said we will put extra money, put our name there, you know. We said no name. Uh, it, it's not going to be any name. It's just going to lift up Jesus. Yes. And so we returned back those who wanted their names to be put. You know. And so what happened was the first time in the history of Taiwan, we had 3,000 people in the independent parade square in front of the presidential palace. We had a procession, we worshipped God, we ministered the word, and God gave us favor in the presidential palace. One of the government officials is a Christian, and so he allowed us to go and pray, pray, pray in the presidential palace with the office, officials. Wow. And, and, and that, that thing shook Taiwan. Shook everyone. Demonic strongholds was all shaken. Oh, and what happened during the cruise ship, God put in my heart and He said to me that within three months or so, within the year end, God will bring about a rainbow in Taiwan, a unique one. That will cause all the neighboring nations to bow at Taiwan. And that will be a, a sign for redemption, for restoration, for rebuilding of Taiwan, for economic stability, for security.
security and everything will be changed. And so what happened was, in the cruise ship, when we came out and everything, it was telecast live on television. Because of the, uh, it was the first time thing, first thing. And so everybody wanted to think, uh, no, everyone did, everybody wanted to broadcast it in the media. So we were on TV. And so I said to God, you put this word in me and you better bring it to pass. <laughs> December 6, December 4, something unique happened in Taiwan in the same year. There was a rainbow who came out of nowhere for 8 hours 58 minutes without rain. Jesus. There was no rain, but the rainbow suddenly appeared. And it was for 8 hours plus, nearly 9 hours. And so all the neighboring nations, the reporters, everyone came to see, to video, to think everything. And it was broadcast. And in fact, it became a Guinness World Record for the longest lasting rainbow. Yes. Wow. The set, two days after that, I'm reaching Taiwan. And I didn't know about it. I was in the news. They were talking about me. And so when I check into my hotel, within an hour, a car came to fetch me. They said to me, the mayor and the minister would like to see you. And so I went and followed them. And from that on, it was total transformation. Hallelujah. The mayor called me to the city council meeting before he makes any decision wow. to pray and decide what to do. Wow. Likewise, the same thing that God did here, God is also doing in, in other places. That's right. God brought me to Philippines. I, I said, God, if you can do it in, in Taiwan, when you do it in Philippines, when you do it in Sri Lanka, when you do it in Indonesia. And so I started going to Philippines. You know, my friend was related to Pre President Duterte. The president of Philippines. And so, he gave me a call and asked me to pray for President Duterte. And so, he said, this is what the request of, he sent me the message from the president, saying to pray for this, this, and that. And I found favor. The hand of God was so strong. And so they allowed us to have a major meeting with a mass youth revival campaign. And so we had about 1,800 youths gathered in one place, wow. worshipping for seven hours, wow. continuously, and the Spirit of God, the fire of God, they were all filled with the fire of God. You know, God told me, you know, I always had this liking, you know, you know, when Benny Hill lift up the hands, everybody gets slain in the Spirit, I always said, God, if you can do that to Benny Hill, oh, when you're not yeah. with me, yeah. am I not your son? <laughs> And 
a lot of people got saved. And so when this political leader came to me for prayer, I said to him, the Lord said to me that you will not win. But he sees your heart and he sees your desire and your longing. Your, 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 you long for your mother's love and your mother is not with you now. And I told him about his entire thing, entire story, entire life. And I told him about his daughter that was unwell. And he got touched and he, he, he just broke down and started crying. But he said, why can't I win? He, I said, you won't win, but your leader will win. But God has a better plan for you. Because you have a sincere heart to bring improvement to the community. And so exactly after the election, he lost, but his leader won. It, became, it was a shift in Sikkim because 30 years corruption politicians were ruling the land. In this first last one, a new political party took place. And this guy, this political leader's leader, because he wanted new management, new system and everything, he appointed this person who came for me for prayer as a national development director and an and, and acting minister for national development. And, and, and God started shifting things. God started shifting things. I, I tell you, God is doing amazing things upon the face of the earth. In Indonesia, I was just sharing to Apostle Excel and Apostle Michael. We were going and doing ministry and everything. And so, a lady came up on wheelchair. A lady came on wheelchair. She was about, maybe about 8 to 9 years on wheelchair. So many sickness in her body. Couldn't walk. Sliding and everything. Doctor told maybe about 2 years maybe. That's the max. And so she came for the meeting. I don't know who she was, but she came with, with she was dressed very well. And so when she came, God touched her. Jesus. And she was completely healed. Amen. Completely healed. That she woke up on the wheelchair. And the maid was carrying the wheelchair to go to the car. And so I think the maid would have called the son. And so the son rushed to come and see the mother who was completely healed. Because they have been to many hospitals, many nations for surgery and everything, nothing happened. And so when the son came, the entire place, conference hall, was full of fear. Because he was a four-star general in Indonesia. Muslim. It's a complete Muslim country. And so what happened was this. The moment he came, he couldn't believe. And his mother started testifying to what God did in her life. And he broke down and said, I, I want to Jesus. I want to know him. Wow. Will he forgive me? Will he come to me? Will he accept me? Wow. And so he repented that he changed and he got saved that day. Wow. And I started mentoring him. I started mentoring him. And then he started coming to our meetings. Because the meeting was evening. So he had to come back from work. And so whenever he come to the meetings, he would come in a uniform. You know, when he came in a uniform, all the guards, the officials, would be so fearful. Why, why is the general coming to your meeting? Why is the general? And because he's coming, there's escort, there's, there's, there's empty military police around him. And so what happened is because he's coming, all the officers, all the organizers, all the hosts, all the, all the venue officials will give us a discount, will give us a leeway for how, how we do our meeting. We can extend the hours, we can do anything that we want. You know, they will just close one time. And so I told this guy, I told his brother, next time, whenever you come, wear your uniform. We will not be doing the first day. Come with your uniform. Come with your uniform. You know, sometimes in our Christian life, we fail to wear our uniform. We fail to wear our garments. Our spiritual garments. You know, the Bible says, put on your whole armor. You know why it says 
put on because we are taking it off. Oh. And so put on your garments. Put on. That's good. Unless you put on, then you will know. You know, when we walk on the streets, yeah. when, a, when a person, when a normal person comes and stop you, you won't stop. But if he's wearing a police uniform, you will stop because he represents the government. Yes. The same way, the same light manner. When you stand and minister the word of God, yes. put on your garments of your calling. Yes. Put on your garments of your anointing. Amen. When you stand on your anointing, I like it's good. there is a change. Amen. There is a difference. There is the manifestation of the kingdom of God because you are the ambassadors of the kingdom of God. And when you know you are an ambassador, it means you have immunity. No one can touch you. Because there is reinforcement from, from heaven to protect you. And God wants to do that. God wants each and every one of us to come to that realization. Unless we are able to realize and stand in our position and take authority, you will see a major shift in our life. And so God is drawing us closer. I truly believe that this is a season that Joshua is coming over to worship and take over Jericho. I truly believe that this is a season of Joshua chapter 4, chapter 5, chapter 6. A season that God is bringing Joshua into a place where Joshua is seeking God for direction to win the battle. Joshua is seeking God, what shall I do? You know, the people of Gilgal and Jericho, they are so afraid of Joshua. They are so afraid of him because they have heard what God has done for the people of Israel and how God has provided for them in the wilderness. And you know, the people of, of Israel, as when they were in the wilderness, they, they were always provided. And they were eating manna daily. And wherever they went, the cloud of glory was upon them. But this is the thing. God doesn't want you to be in the wilderness anymore. 2020, 2021 might be a season of wilderness for some of us. Some of us still, God had to deal with our murmuring. God had to deal with our mouth issues. Because we have so much of complaints, so much of critics. And so God had to bring us to submission, to total obedience. You know, it's only through total obedience that you are going to see the maturity in your spiritual life. I believe God is maturing His remnant, His resurgence towards fruitfulness. And that is what Joshua is doing. Joshua is coming to seek God. And the people of Jericho is thinking, what is this people doing there and not coming out? And they are so afraid of Joshua. But this is what God, Joshua is going to, before the presence of God and is asking God, what shall I do, God? What shall I do? And you know, and Joshua, while he's praying, his eyes was always fixed to Jericho. God wants you to know, if God has given you a promise, if God has given you an assignment, do not lose your focus. Yes. Always keep your focus. As how Jesus, when he was always passing by Jerusalem, his eyes was always turned to Jerusalem. His eyes was always focused to Jerusalem. And so do not lose your focus of your calling, of your mandate. Revisit your mandate. Revisit your calling. Revisit the promises that God has spoken to you. And recheck and check yourself why it's not happening. Most of the time, it's because of the fall in our sight. Because God never leaves us. It's we who move away from Him. And so God is wanting us to draw back closer to Him. The more we draw closer, the more we get closer to Him, the more His light revealed to us, His light shed, overshadows upon us. And the more His light overshadows upon us, His light exposes the lackness in us. The sin in us, the falsehood in us, the impurity in us. And so God is removing every impurities. This is going to be a season of reconsecration. You know, like Joshua. 
He was about to go to take Jericho. But I want you to know, without a consecration, there is no conquest. Wow. Without consecration, there is no conquest. And so Joshua goes and prays, and he sees the Son of Man, like the mighty commander. And he says, he looks at him and he says, are you for us? Are you against us? And he said, he didn't answer him. He said, but I am here to tell you what to do so that you can be a victor. And this is what he tells him. You know, Joshua is thinking that the Lord is, is about to give him strategies to win the battle. Uh -huh. Many times in our Christian life, we are asking God, Lord, give me strategies. Give me, show me the way how I should do it, do it so that I can have victory. But to his surprise, the Lord said to him, make yourself small knives, flame knives. And he was shocked. He said, I, was, I thought the Lord is going to ask us to sharpen our swords, sharpen and polish them, and prepare our hands for battle. But the Lord said to him, make yourself flint knife from the rock. And the rock talks about Jesus. And the knife, he said, go and circumcise. Circumcision to all those who are with you. And you know what? All those, the first generation, passed on in the wilderness. It was the second generation that was rising. The remnant was rising. But the remnant was ready. But there was no consecration. There was no covenant relationship because a fling night circumcision talks about covenant relationship. You cannot win your battle without a covenant with God. You cannot build, you cannot have your victory if you don't have a relationship with God. And God is wanting you and calling each and every one of us towards a deeper, consecrated relationship with Him. And God is stirring our hearts today. God is stirring our passion today. God is stirring our spirits today. And you know why? Because, because the younger generation didn't know what the Lord did for them. They have heard, but they have not seen. They have heard. They have heard what God did in Egypt. But they have not seen, they have not experienced. Jesus. So they don't, they don't have a personal relationship with God. They don't have a personal experience of the miracle of God. But God is preparing them. God is saying, consecrate yourself. And he said to Joshua, go out seven days. Go out seven days and march. And do not shout. Because, you know, these people... You know, just imagine Joshua. Joshua is receiving this call, this, this mandate, this assignment from God. And he's coming to the people, the, the, the youngsters, the younger generation. The younger generation is thinking, Joshua, the new leader, is going to bring great formulas to win the battle. But he's coming there to tell them, get fling knives and wow. circumcise. Amen. Just imagine what they would have thought. How can we circumcise and win the battle? You know, when you are circumcised, you don't have energy in your body. You become weak. You are in pain. And now the Lord is telling them to march seven days, seven days with that pain. And do not make noise. No, I tell you. The reason of the circumcision, circumcision talks about the foreskin. It talks about the fleshliness of mankind. Wow. It talks about the sinfulness of mankind. Wow. And God is telling us, in order for you to receive a victory, in order for you to experience my salvation, in order for you to experience my hand upon your life, you have to get rid of your flesh. Get rid of your flesh. This is good. And so they are going, they are going, they are marching, they are marching. And you know what? These guys are marching. These guys are marching. Hey, these guys are marching. The people in Jericho, they are thinking what is happening to the Israelites. You go, you go. Are they drunk? They were so fearful of them. But what is happening to them? They can't even walk. They can't even walk. Because they are in pain. Wow. You know, sometimes God allows you to go through pain. Because he wants you to know it is not by your strength. 
prophet in him just slipped out.
come every year to, to Epic, right, to be refreshed, re-energized, recharged, you know, and just receive the blessing. And, uh, and it's an incredible blessing for him uh, as, he, as he takes it back home. And, uh, you know, it's, it's, it's important what your expectation is when you come to these meetings, yeah. you know, to, to a summit like this. When you come that you're really, you know, getting ready to receive and, and you put a demand on that anointing on the speakers and, and you just come with a great expectation, God will meet you in an incredible way. So there are places where you, you, you make a spiritual pilgrimage, it's not just you go to another conference, but it really is a spiritual pilgrimage where you're expecting to meet, meet the Lord, hallelujah, in a powerful, powerful way. And um, yeah, wow, incredible. Let's, let's put our hands together for Apostle Melvin David from Singapore, Epic Leader. Good morning, family. Good morning. Good morning, Epic family. Good morning. Um, you might know me, uh, y'all know that when I feel the Spirit of the Lord, uh, some people run, some people shout, some people dance, I cry. So I'm trying to hold back tears right now. Um, last night, were you here last night? Let me see your hand. Um, last night, Apostle Melvin um, gave a word, a prophetic word to my business partner, Alani Walker. And he said, he, you know, he's the one that sowed the seed, significant seed. And one of the things you spoke over him was that a miracle for your family. Yeah. 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 Come on. I said, a miracle for yeah. your family. Right. Jesus. See, it's gatherings like this. Yeah. Come, on, Come on. Top of the year. Right. This, this, this extraordinary people influencing culture coming together. But it's so much more than that. Yeah. We just saw with Apostle Melvin. I just got poured into and ministered to by Apostle Melvin. What you said just yes. changed, just shifted some stuff in me. Yeah. And God just used you. I got a text this morning from Lonnie who said I won't be able to make it to the day session because my spiritual father just had a stroke. Yeah. He didn't understand. He didn't. He, he didn't connect with a miracle from my family. He didn't know what it meant when he left last night. But this morning he got the word that he had a stroke. And he said, would you all please pray? So my family, we had prayer in our bedroom. My daughters and my son and my wife this morning, we began to pray. And he just texted me at 11.08, six minutes ago. Come on. He said, Pastor Warner is out of surgery. They removed the blood clot. Yeah. He's recovering, and they expect a full recovery. He has feeling on both sides of his body. The prophecy spoken over me last night. When he said my family needed a miracle, it was for him. Thank you all for the prayers. God is good, won't he do it? My pleasure. Um, why don't you stand on your feet? Any keys? In Thank you, Apostle. Um, my pleasure to introduce to most of you present to some of you who know um, my best friend, um, Apostle Victor Gaddy, is in the house. Can y'all give him a hand clap? Of praise? 2003, I was a life management counselor uh, at the Star of Hope Men's Development Center. Uh, in downtown Houston. It's a homeless shelter, one of the largest homeless shelters in the country um, for homeless men, men coming home from prison, men recovering from addiction. And um, we had just started our church that year, 2003. And I was preaching on Sundays, Apostle Melvin, and leaving the pulpit and going to work the two to ten shift at the men's shelter. And um, 
I had never crossed paths with this man of God, but every every night we had the chapel there, Apostle Axel, and uh, you have about 200, 250 drug addicted, ex-offender, homeless men in this chapel, and all these churches from around the city come in and do their little, you know, little feel-good preaching. And yeah, we went and helped the homeless. And boy, aren't we anointed? Aren't we powerful? And um, I, I was never really, to be honest with you, I was never really moved by the little ministries that came in. The preaching was very cookie-cutter, very programmatic. And then we had Hurricane Allison here in Houston. And... Um, Came downstairs for my lunch break. It was probably seven, eight, seven, eight, seven, seven o'clock at night. Came downstairs for my lunch break, and I heard this preaching. Um, uh, this man of God preaching, and I heard a, I heard a sound in the Holy Ghost. And uh, Holy Spirit said, "I want you to sit down and listen to him." So I was on my lunch break, so I, was, I would always just go upstairs and ignore the preaching. This time I sat down, and the Holy Spirit said. Um, I have a relationship, a connection with him for you. Fast forward, y'all, um, 18 years later, that's my best friend, y'all. That's my brother. That's my, that's my Jonathan. That's all my, that's all my, my accountability. Um, uh, just, just iron sharpening iron. Our families have been connected. Our kids have grown up together. Um, a prophet of the Lord. Second, third generation prophet, Apostle Lee Gaddy, his dad, founder, pastor of New Jerusalem, Whole Truth a Church, pastor of the, really one of the first black mega churches in Little Rock, Arkansas. Um, Mom Pearlie, his mother, went home to be with the Lord uh, not long ago. Would you talk about an eagle eye prophet? They've spoken over this house, um, spoken over our lives, spoken over this city. God is really pulling him all around. Uh, he's traveling a lot, lots of preaching engagements because the Lord is really using his anointing. I want you all to welcome my brother, Apostle Victor Gaddy, as he comes. Some call him the painting prophet. He's a painter as well as a prophet who moves in the apostolic. God bless you. Come on, let's lift our hands to the Lord. Come on, lift our hands. Come on, lift our hands to God.
trust that your perfect will will be made manifest through our lives for your glory, for your kingdom. We ask this in faith and we believe that it's so in Jesus' name. Give God the best and praise to you. Head that I saw come through with the first head was the head of a lion. 
and the lion's head was open uh, with his mouth wide open and he was uh, roaring as loud as he possibly could. And then the next head I saw pierced through was the head of an eagle. When I saw the head of an eagle, I said, oh my God, what in the world is going on? And I said, I'm advancing a next move in this hour upon the earth and I want you to make my prophets, I want you to make my apostles aware. Starting first with them, because many of us understand with the establishment of the canon for which we call to be the decrees of God's word, that the doctrines for us to follow the mandate of God are established by the prophets and the apostles. Say amen for moving fast enough for you. And so for that we understand now we're in an hour that this particular work is fivefold, that all of us now are being used in this end time ministry to equip the saints, the laity in the sanctuary so that they can do the work of the ministry. But the weight of that is no longer just primarily on the heads of apostles or prophets. We're going to see a breakout in all of our houses and all of our training and all of our Zooms and all of these particular places that God has set us to raise up individuals for this end time ministry. But what the Lord was sharing with me in particular said, Victor, I want you to help them to understand that I'm going to send this season of redressing, redressing, everybody say redressing. Yes. Heard the word that I never took time to pay close attention to it. Redressing deals with the, the, this idea, relief from distress. Relief from distress. It also means uh, the possibility of seeking remedy without redress. The idea is that wherever there's been some things done wrong, wherever there's been some loss, that reparation is about to take place. Wherever there's been some instances where you've been lost, uh, you've been attacked by the enemy in your ministry, in your home, and in your mind, and in your body, the Lord said, I'm about to build them back up for the work of the ministry. Even as I was sitting there, the Lord said, many of them have been operating out of the power of the mantle that's on their lives, not realizing that they're also operating with injuries. He said, so what I've got to do for them is do what is known as special recognizance. It's recovery recognizance. It's the kind of military acts that take place in the military by those that are trained to go in and do special forces ministry. These are units that have military intelligence and they know how to go behind the enemy's line where you have been attacked in the midst of the battle and build you back up where you've been worn out. Because your mind is so fixed for battle, you don't know the deep or the depth, brother, of the injury that has taken place to you. And many of those of us are aware of even a Jim G. Lake, the idea of these great missionaries that have gone out to do great things for the Lord. And while they're doing this, the enemy is attacking back home. Your old Roberts and your Jimmy Swaggers and your A.A. Allen's, I need to hear y'all talk back to me now. The pioneers have gone on before us, and most often the thing that the enemy comes after is the thing that's closest to us, family. And so when the enemy can begin to attack us in our family, he's injuring us in ways that it keeps us distracted from the main thing that God has assigned our lives to fulfill and finish. So he wants to frustrate us with family so we won't focus on ministry and the purpose that God has given to us. And so things happening with your son, and things happening with your daughter, some that are still strung out, some that are still cut up, some that are still having children out of wedlock, things that are happening in your family where there's still sickness and disease, where there's still generational curses that you've been declaring and decreeing that the devil back up off of your children, back up off your wife, back up off your husband, back up off of your finances. All of these things are injuries to slow you down from the main thing that God has called you to do. But the Lord wanted me to send, send me today to tell you that he's already sent special recognizance to heal you while you're on the battlefield so that you can stay focused. He does not need you to come off the line, come down off the wall. He needs you to hold your position. Look at somebody on your table and tell them, hold your position. Tell somebody else, tell them, hold your position. The position is your mindset to trust God until it changes. Trust God until it turns around. Trust God until it comes through. Trust God until you see the full manifestation of the promise that God made to you. Don't lose your position. All right, 
right, let me get to the rest of this now. Now I can get right into the prophetic part of this. I told y'all we're going to move fast. Somebody say amen. amen. The thing the Lord began to show me even on last night, I was just going before the Lord at 2 o'clock in the morning. He said, all right, you can come to me now. I want you to wake up. I want to share some things with you. The Lord began to tell me about Apostle Sipak. Apostle Sipak, I want you to stand and I want you to come. And I want at least for those that are seven, if we can get seven, if we can get seven to stand around him. Apostle Melvin, if you'll choose the other six other than yourself being one of the seven. Talk about this Apostle Melvin right here. If you'll choose the other six, if you'll choose the other six, you being seven. If you'll choose the other six, other than you being the seven, that will stand around him. Let's do it quick. Let's do it quick. Let's do it quick. Let's do it quick. Come on. Come on. Come on. Come on. If he points at you, I need you to move quick. If he points at you, I need you to move quick. Come on. Come on. Everyone else in the house, I want you to begin to pray right now. Come on. Let's pray right now. We're in a prophetic house. Is that right, somebody? Talk back to me. We're in a prophetic house, right? Are we? Yes, 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 yes. Thank you, Holy Ghost. Thank you, Holy Ghost. Thank you, Holy Ghost. Come on. Come on. You don't know the whole side. Come on and pray. By now, you had time to discern my spirit. You ought to know who I am and what I am. among you. If you already know who I am in the spirit, you can go free yourself and let's get to the business of what we got to do with here. Somebody say amen to the Holy Ghost. Is that seven? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Yes. Point your hands towards him and as long as you can hold them there, keep your hands there. Here is a word the Lord that gave, the Lord that gave to me and before I go into this specifically. The Lord said he's breaking Russia open for you. He's breaking Russia open for you. That as, 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 as much as those walls have been held up by the strong principalities of not just communism, but also a great stronghold of atheism, the Lord said, I'm breaking the doors open for you. Lord said, I've been hearing the cries behind the walls of Russia for a greater revival, a greater expansion, a greater outpouring of the Holy Ghost. The Lord said, I'm going to give you clearance. Time out. Lift your hands, everybody else in the house, and come into a greetings. Listen, I'm, I'm giving you clearance. I'm giving you clearance to go behind the enemy's walls. I'm going to set up apostolic camps inside. And I'm almost here. And as you're on the inside of this, it's going to be, begin to break out. The Lord said, I'm going to cover them. I'm going to cover them. I'm going to cover them. They're not going to be healed. Though they will be sought out, the Lord said, they will not be healed. They're going to experience. Thank you, Holy Ghost. Even as it was for Shadrach and Meshach and the at the time when they looked to try to kill them, the Lord said, I'm going to step in front of the fire. I'm going to step in front of the guns. I'm going to step in front of the assassins. I'm going to step in front and stop the very work of the enemy and I'm going to preserve them from the ministry in which I'm using you to go behind the enemy's walls, breaking down the walls of Russia for you to go inside and establish an apostolic hub there in Russia. Give God a hand to praise everybody else that's standing. Come on. Don't play with it. Give God a hand to praise. Come on. Come on. Let's give God a hand to praise. Come on. Apostle Sipcock last night that you were so far ahead. So far ahead. And when I saw you, I saw you kneeling in blood. And I was like, Lord, what in the world is that blood? The Lord said, That's the blood of Jesus. But who can that man say? Your legs were full of muscles. You're standing, the Lord said, it is sure, it spits, indicating that you're fit for this final fight. You spoke out of your own mouth about the strength to finish up some things and to do some other things. The Lord said, you're already fit for this final 
fight. It's Kushia Nama. The Lord said, There is an anointing on your life to preserve you. While there has been death that walked around you and asked for your life, the Lord said, Not so, because I preserved him for the final hour. Said, because you are fit for this final fight, he says that many new daughters will rise. Many, many, many new daughters will rise. The Lord began to let me hear that there has been a wailing that has been coming from these daughters that has troubled the heavens. And even the daughters that are in here now, the Lord said, I'm well pleased with you. There are many new babies that are being birthed in a dark hour. Here's instructed to the daughters that are here. The Lord said, protect them with the truth in this final hour. His truth, as we know that Jesus prayed in his prayer, was to protect the kingdom in your truth. Your word is truth. So concerning these that are young, that are young in the faith, he said, they're very passionate, but they lack wisdom. He said, protect the babies. They don't know the danger of this hour. Protect the babies. They really don't know the danger of this hour. Listen to me daughters in Zion. Protect the babies. They really don't know the danger of this hour. Three particular spirits that are coming after them. The spirit of seduction, the spirit of pride, and the spirit of mammon is coming after this gifted call generation. The Lord said, protect them. They don't understand the danger of what comes to shift great men and women of God out of places that I have ordained for them to fulfill the very work that was assigned to them. Some of their predecessors fell for it and they left assignments unfulfilled in the earth. The Lord said, pray for them. Pray for them that they don't marry out of season. Pray for them that they don't marry the wrong man. Pray for them that they don't marry the wrong woman. Pray for them that they don't have babies out of season. Pray for them that they'll make sure that they have a real consecrated life. Pray for them that they know that they need to walk in real submission to authority. That there's no level of anointing that gives you a right to walk outside of the authority that's over your life. Pray for them that they'll understand the hierarchy of what it needs to be in the fivefold ministry. Pray for them. They're gifted without wisdom. And they're going to need their prayers to survive in this final hour. Thank you, Holy Ghost. Lord, show me that even for those in the evening of this conference right now, lift your hands to everyone in this room. The Lord was carrying me over the house. I kept looking. I said, God, what is it? He said, look down. As I looked down, I saw that the feet of every person in this room was large. I said, God, what's going on with those feet? He said, this is indicating strength to stand in the new places. to the Lord and thank God that he's giving you strength to stand in the two places. These two places, the Lord said, is first in the spirit realm. Yes, you're seated in heavenly places, but I want you to understand that I'm giving you strength to stand in the new places. What's in the strength to stand in the new places has to do with the final harvest. To bring the music down just a little bit. To stand in the final harvest, the gathering just before the greatest storm hits. Just before the greatest storm hits, there's about to be an upswing of a level of persecution on the body of Christ worldwide like we've never seen before. But the Lord said, I'm going to protect you, and you will be able to withstand. Every last one of the attacks of the enemy, you will not die out of season. Lift your hands to the Holy Ghost. You will not die out 
of season. Open your mouth and declare, I will not die out of season. places empty. As they made it clear, we're not leaving here just by ourselves. We're taking our children. We're taking our cattle. We're taking our donkey. They gave them not only that, but even treasures to go with them. The Lord said, this season of transition for you and for the entire regions that you're over, you're all coming out with wealth. You're all coming out with power. You're all coming out with anointing. You're all coming out with resources. There is favor for your faithfulness. There is favor for your faithfulness. If I'm allowed to touch you, can I touch you? Someone give me some more very quickly. I'm moving fast. Stay focused on the apostle. Don't leave it. Stay focused. Come on, apostle, please. For your faithfulness. Because you know how to fight. Does it mean that you haven't been hurt? Because you know how to say it. Does it mean that you haven't been weak? The Lord said, I'm renewing. I'm renewing. I'm drawing out all of the fatigue. And I am renewing and I am restoring. The Lord said, I'm even replacing. I'm even replacing. The Lord said, I'm bringing new shields. And I'm bringing new swords. I'm bringing new armor. But the advance of the fire within that region is going to draw many unto that locale. They're going to wonder, who is this man? And because of your humble disposition to give God glory, the fires of revival are going to fall in a greater way in that entire region. The Lord said, don't worry about the Nixians. Don't worry about those that are fighting against you. Don't worry about the mouth of the witches and the warlocks. The Lord said, out of counsel, out of every assignment that's been sent out against you, and you come on time, and you will rise. 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 You will rise in new strength and new favor. God, we give you praise for it. We seal over this God the protection for the treasures to get out safely. Give that hand to praise for your brother, the man of God. Come on. Come on. Come on. Come on. There it is. Come on. Someone stand behind this mighty. I'm letting you go deeper. The grace 
to walk within the territory. And the anointing on you will be like it unto Peter. And I place an anointing in your shadow. That even as you walk by, they will be healed. You will see the supernatural in this end time like you've never known before in your life. And I will increase the dreams. I go to my I said, I will increase the dreams and the visions. And the Lord said, as for your sons, I'm bringing them to their knees. I'm bringing real submission. I'm bringing real honor. I'm bringing real honor to you. For the work that's in your hands is a great work. And the Lord said, I've never sent it to break you. And you will fulfill it to the fullness. And I pray God a protection over the entire body of this vessel. In the mighty name of Jesus. That he shall live and not die. In the mighty name of Jesus. You wear it well. It's so big. I've never seen a mantle as big and as long. This is an aged anointing. It's been curated. It's very long. The train that's connected to this mantle has so much to do with the mentorship that you receive from so many predecessors. But the Lord said, in this final hour, this last one is yours. This last one, this last mantle that you're about to operate in is yours. The skillfulness to war, the skillfulness to see, the skillfulness to declare. The Lord said, I'm going to move you quickly in this next season. And Lord said, make sure that there are, un there are no unnecessary ties and commitment to things. Lord said, I need you to be free with the wings of an evangelist. That as I want to move you quickly, you're not tied down to a building or to a particular people. That I've called you to nations. Remember what I told you. You are for the nations. Do not let any particular people hold you to a particular assembly, to a particular zip code. The anointing that is on you for is for nations. This is for nations. The Lord said, this is for nations. And the angels that I have sent, even as you spoke out of your own mouth, but Tama have been sent for you to lift you up. And even as you face in this last season, the head winds, the Lord said, I'm erasing every persecution. Even as close as from the first relationship. I'm closing the mouth of the scandalous. No man, I'm closing the Lord said, I'm closing the mouth of the scandalous. And every word that was spoken out to give power, to bring harm and danger, the Lord said, I'm rendering it powerless. And you will run with a fresh wind, you will run with a fresh power. So the Lord said, I'm giving the fire within your mouth. The command that as you open, as you open your mouth. And even as I see you in these locales, I see you countries, that even before you come up to them, demons will scream and cry out, but even as you're preaching the power and the fire of the gospel, the Lord says, demons will come out even as you preach, even as you teach, you won't even have to go back and lay hands on them, the demons will come out screaming, because of the anointing, the mountain that is now yours, because you've proven faithful. Over what's been placed in your hands. And I 
security, even the covenant relationship that you're in now. Does she catch up? Oh, no, no, no. Could that be the time that she catch up? Did she catch up to stand with you in the mighty name of Jesus? I praise you for it. You got to hear the priest of Apostle Paul. Yes. You knew we had business. Yes. Come on, give me a time for my very quickly. Come on. Lift your hands to God. Come on, we don't know what we do. We don't expect it. We're all trained in here. I know our man. We're all trained in here. Holy Ghost. One more time. I'm going to And I hear the conversations, the conversations about how we need to connect to advance what the Lord has put in our heart for vision, for breakthrough, for deliverance, for healing. The Lord said, I hear the conversations. And as you've been speaking about God, the favor that we need, the resources that we need, the connections that we need to really put this into motion, God, will you release it up to us? And the Lord said, the answer is yes. The answer is yes. Over every manual. Over every instruction, the answer, the Lord said, it is yes. It is yes. The Lord has trust you with yes. You don't trust everybody with yes. They usually have to go through a long season of wait to be trained for a yes. But the Lord said, he's trusting you with a yes. Now, there's some that are going to want to try to come and join quickly for what you paid for. The Lord said they're not qualified. Here it is because they're not consecrated. They're gifted, but they're not qualified. They're talented, but they're not qualified. Be careful who you allow to come into the season of yes. When it opens up, it's going to look like it's kind of moving slow. Lord said, but then it's going to hit a vein that is going to catch a wind of such momentum that people are going to wonder how the world did she get on that cover? How in the world did she get on that show? How in the world did she get into that next? How in the world the Lord said, I'm saying yes. You're in a season of yes. And the Lord said, it is well concerning everything for your family. I see a young lady. Thank you for going in and repairing. Oh my God, let's see. The Lord said, even while you're busy. And the enemy started to try to get busy. To get you distracted. Thank you for standing and not coming down. Lord said, I'm going to reward you for trusting me not to get out of position. Because they wanted you to get back into the same cycle. Come over here, big mama. Come over here and save us again. Come over here and make it right again. Come over here and make it good again. The Lord said, no. I pray you to stop. And I trust you. The Lord said, because you trust me to enter into the cycle, the Lord said, I'll be the one to shut down the patterns of the addiction. I'll be the one to shut down the patterns of rebellion. I'll be the one to shut down the patterns of disobedience. The Lord said, I'll shut it down if you stay focused in this season of yes. Give God a hand to praise for the sister woman God. It's okay. That's good right there. Thank you, Jesus. 
Lord said, I made you ready to strike. Yes, Lord, yes. Wonderful thing. Wonderful thing. Lord said, that's why I brought you to a season of isolation. So I brought you to a period where there's going to be some solidarity. Lord said, because I'm going to teach you some of the moves. I'm going to teach you some new strategies. I'm going to open up the kind of doors that when you go in, you're not going to go in wasting time. Yes. Hear me clearly. Yes. This is not just for him now, but many of you that are in here right now, the way that you've been doing ministry under the the auspices and the banner of tradition is about to shift greatly. Yeah. Yeah. That when you go into these particular houses, it won't be the program and the protocol of what you have known. That as soon as you get out of your car, you're going to be right into the throes of doing the work of the ministry. We're going back to the hour of the beggar at the gate. We're going back to the hour where those that will be on the side of the street calling out your name because they see the grace and the power that's resting on your hour, on your life. We're going back to the hour where they see you on the bread hour. They see you walking in the store. They, they will see you on the clothing hour in the mall. We're going back to the hour where they see you and you've got to be ready to move in the moment. Not somebody calling out your name, calling out your title. You've got to be ready to move in the the moment. It's going to be so unorthodox to the traditional setting where people have believed I've got to be in the church building. I've got to wait for some music. I've got to wait for some dancers. No, your mantle is ready to activate if you will be obedient. So when the Namansa, so when you're called into these places, you're going to shift the entire house. Oh, she am I? The minute you start to ask you questions, where did you get that kind of wisdom to execute and power from? Well, said, so I'm breaking down the barriers even in some steep-rooted traditions. Well, said, so I hear the Baptist calling you. I hear these steep-rooted traditions calling you. The Lord said, I'm sending you in to tear down the altars. To tear down the altars of tradition. And the seeds that you will leave behind are the seeds of revival. And when they call you back, the power of God, the wind of God is going to so follow you into these buildings. And even those that said, I don't believe in speaking in tongues. While standing there, the Lord's going to fill them with the Holy Ghost. There's a grace on your life to bring movements. There's a grace on your life to bring revivals. Come on, breaker. Come on, breaker. The anointing of the breaker. Come on, breaker. It's on your life to destroy yes. these altars. Yes. Yes. When you go back, you'll see the fruits of your labor and your faithfulness. Yes. Thank the, Lord. the Lord said, you understand what it means to seek me first. And so all other things concerning your life, the Lord said, I'm about to add that unto you. Stay focused. This spirit of entrepreneurship that's on your life. The Lord said, I'm going to set you up to set you free. I'm going to set you up to set you free. That you're not bound to anybody's clock but my own. So because you've proven yourself to be faithful over little, I'm about to make you ruler over much. Money while you sleep. Money while you sleep. Money while you sleep. Monday while you sleep so that you can be free to do the work of the kingdom. We give you praise for it. Jesus said, you've got to have praise for the man of God. Come on, move it Everyone, if you will, please, one more time, lift your hand.
That's not a staff. That's a scepter. That's not a staff. That's a scepter. Say it. That's not a staff. That's a scepter. Oh my God. Lift your hands. Come on. Again, say it. That's not a staff. That's a scepter. Lord said, I've elevated you beyond just shepherding apostles. I've now shifted you in a position to rule over governments. You've proven faithful to cover the apostles. Now, little Messiah, now I'm giving you center to cover those that are in high positions in government, prime ministers, governors, mayors, presidents, council members. The scepter, the Lord said, it's in your hand. And the Lord said, they will change the policy. Well, yeah, Daniel, local man, that man, they will change the policy. Because of the grace and the anointing that's resting on you. And the spirit of the whole time under the spirit of excellence. Ooh, and the greatest one that you function in is love. Yeah. And the moments are holy there, and because of your love. The Lord said, I'm going to reconcile, I'm going to heal, I'm going to use you to bring back reconnection where the enemy brought division in the houses, in the families, in the fight for the Lord said, I'm going to use you as a major catalyst to draw the bride back together, to draw the bride back together. Through this power of love, the wisdom, the wisdom, the wisdom to heal them from missed moments, opportunities. Some that will say, I felt like I, I should have went with you, I should have been with you. The Lord said, I'm going to use you to love them back to him. Because they stop functioning out of insecurity. They stop functioning out of a damaged ego. They stop functioning because they develop a spirit like it unto Satan. They wanted your position. But the Lord said, this is a sign. You're assigned to cover the nations and the grace. Holy Nebuchadnezzar, lift it up right there, lift your hands, everybody. The grace to cover the nations, rest of your life. There are many more phone calls and conversations that are coming to you. Many a times that are going to have to be set up to work, the language is translated for you. But because of the grace and the anointing that rests on your life, they're coming for the oil. The Lord said, in the wisdom, the wisdom, the wisdom, the wisdom of the age, I've given to you. And you were birthed out many, 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 many more. Many more. In the mind of time, Hollywood, Bukushia. You're going to Hollywood. And I see the Lord giving you the seat at the table with major entertainers. They're going to repent of the witchcraft that they depended on to get insight for success. And the Lord's going to give you the wisdom to give them counsel how to make moves for the kingdom. You didn't cause many new shows to come out. Many new shows to come out to cause inspiration. You let them outside For healing, for families. Ooh, 
the Lord said, I'm even sending you to one of the most strongest camps. I'm sending you into the transgender camp. Well, said, I have sons in there. I have daughters in there. Yes, they have changed the outward, but I still see their hearts. And they will be born again, even though they bear the scar of their sin. And they will be used mightily to go into these other areas and call those that are bound out. They will walk with the principle of the love that you will teach them. In Jesus' mighty name. Somebody bless the Lord for apostles to come. Thank you, thank you. Come on, worship. Yes, Lord. Get in there. Say yes, Lord. Put your heart in it. Just say yes, Lord. Give me five. One, two, three, four, five. Give me five. One, two, three, four, five. Is that five? One, two, three, four, five. So just stack up a little bit for me. Raise your hand. Elevation is yours. You heard it. To whom much is given, much is required. The Lord wants you to know, yes, that you are covered in this new way. Do you don't want to push you? The Lord said the things that you're feeling around you as you're in that place worry. The Lord said don't mistake the feeling to be demonic attack as it is much of the presence of the wind that's coming from the wings of the angels. The Lord said I shift you into dimensions. And when you come down, the Lord said, I'm, I'm, I'm releasing treasures into your hands. The Lord said, this is a healing gift. To heal all manner of sicknesses and diseases. In this ministry that's been entrusted to your hands, you're going to see miracle working power to heal all manner of sickness and disease. I'll say it. Yes, Holy Ghost. The Lord said, I release it to you the power to raise the dead. Come on. Oh my God. Oh my God. 
off your shoes. But I will tell you what the Lord is saying. Keep your treasures. But I will declare unto you the counsel of God concerning what you told me. You're going to get international clearance. I see, I see, I see where there is a temple in certain areas. And when it starts to shut down, many would want to get out and they can't get out. The Lord said, but I'm going to give you international clearance. That when there's an uprising, when there's an upheaval in these countries to shut down the entire traveling, the Lord said, I'm going to give you access to get out. Private jets. Loan to you. To get you in. To get you out. <laughs> To get, now I'm gonna move and to get you in, sir, and to get you out. Somebody say to get you in and to get you out. There has been the blowing of shofars for you. I said the wisdom that I'm giving to you the warfare to take nations. He said, train my children. Train them. That I mean, gather the harvest. Gather the harvest. I see you in this large field. The Lord said, I'm going to meet you. I'm going to meet you in this visitation. The Lord said, when you leave out, you're going to leave out pregnant. Fool, 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 says the Lord. The Lord said, I'm covering your wife. I'm covering, I'm covering, I'm covering. And by sustaining grace, for the work that I've committed to your hands will be protected in the mighty name of Jesus. Hands are lifted. Our time is up. Father, we thank you. Father, we thank you. Father, we thank you. Hands are lifted. Come on. Father, we thank you. Shh. Come on, noble Hoshe. Come on. Father, Hobashaya. Father, we thank you. Father, we thank you. Father, we Father, we thank you. The Lord said, You have the right. You have the right to open up your mouth and to decree it. He's trusting you with it. Speak it. Even the resistance, the pushback, the Lord said, not so. This year, you are in the year of release. The Lord said, you're already in it. Lord said, we're going to make up for lost time. You know what the years, the canker and the palmer were. Lord said, I'm bringing it back. I'm bringing it back. Yes, you are a part of this remnant. And you will rise. This place of favor is coming from unlikely places. Been a lot of promises made to you. But the Lord said, I'm going to bring it from a whole other direction. Because those that try to do it, they have strings attached. They want to be the kind of how to dictate how you're going to do it. 
have words at the table of the council of things that God has given to you. The Lord said, not so. I'm bringing sponsorship from a whole other direction. Father, thank you for the release of the favor to do the work of the kingdom. Lift your heads one last time and I'm done. Apostle Gentry, Lady Prophet Gentry, come on. Oh, belly dicky and I wish. I was talking to the Lord about the two of you last night. I know you. Y'all know me. But I was like, Lord, what? is stopping this money <laughs> y'all give me just a little room please I kept asking I said God possible. I said what's stopping this money and he called out your name I thought it was Janice. I said, who is Janice? Because there's no Janice in this room, is there? No. The Lord said, it ain't Janice. I was like, okay. He said, Janice. I said, okay. And I asked the Lord, what's stopping this money? He said, son, I want you to shout out, break it. Everyone on this side to please move over this way. It's okay. Move over that way. It's okay. It is. It's okay. Symbolically, I, 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 I need something. I need something that I can break. Is there a ruler that I can break? Is there a stick that I can break? Come on, move quick with me. Come on, come on. Let's go. Let's go. Give me something I can break. Even if it's an old tethered drumstick. Come on, move quick with me. I gotta do this. As I'm doing this, someone lift your hand to the presence of the Lord and begin to say it's gotta break. It's gotta break. It's gotta break. Come on, look, don't talk about that like you don't mean it. Open up your mouth. It's gotta break. There it is, yes. I'm, I'm with him, but the Lord said within three months. Within three months. Lord said, I'm going to open up a significant door for you. Such a door of favor. This this favor leads into other doors of favor. Lord said, "You're going to be where you desire to be independently financially." The next three months, watch what the Lord does significantly. And the Lord said, "Be faithful to sow your first fruits. Be faithful to sow your first fruits of the increase." Grab that jump. All right. Yes, Lord. Both of y'all got to get your hands on that. I see y'all. Not a fracture, but a break. You are already millionaires. Okay, that's just one piece. Get a hold of another one. Hear it. You're already millionaires.
is going to break John is going to break so where's come on apostles stand behind him for me the vision that you have requires millions of dollars it ain't little money and the Lord said he's going to break it this spirit that's been blocking I mean literally blocking it from coming through because it's already there the Lord said today I need five people to shout out real loud today It's breaking John today. No, 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 I'm not taking that back. Open up your mouth and shout out today. As you spoke it, Father, to me, I release it now. On this side. Count of three, I want you guys to break that. Stand behind her. And God made the favor. Made the favor that would force the move. Force the hands. Quit passing over their grant. Quit passing over that ideas. Quit passing over that vision. Quit passing over and may there be an opening over for the breaking of this vision. On the count of three, I need everybody to shout out break and hold it as long as you can. One, two, three. Get your spirit in the posture of what? 
concerning this. You have too much work to do. Break it down just for a second. That's real good. You're not going anywhere anytime soon. You're going to live flourishing to see it happen. Depression, I come for you. Get your hands off of the mind. Get out of there. Get off of every dream. Get off of every plan. Get off of her in the mighty name of Jesus. And make the garment. Let not my side. Every woman shout out garment. Make the garment of praise. Rest on you. The Lord said, no wasted oil. No wasted tears. I've come for every word. Come here. Even the ones you couldn't speak. <laughs> Out of your mouth. I heard it come from your heart. The Lord said, and I'm going to work it all the way out. I see a whirlwind around your family. Hey, a whirlwind around your family, around that household. I hear chains falling. I hear locks unlocking. In the Namaya, in the mighty name of Allah. In the mighty name of Jesus. I want you in service. Come off the sideline. Hey, yeah, yeah. Come off the sideline. I need you in service, says the Lord. Give me your entire life. I'll take care of the business. We're moving quick. Come on. Yes. Holy Ghost. <laughs> Holy Ghost for the favor. For the great work. For the fresh water that flows. For the intercessory prayers that have been prayed. For the warring against the witches. When they tried to trace you and track you. I covered you, I covered you, I covered you. And you are protected. Even for those that try to seek you out in astral projection, these statements. For those that try to come to find you, to stop you, the Lord said they will not find you. I have you hidden under my shadow, under my wing. The Lord said, continue the work. Continue the work. And as it relates to the grandbabies, the Lord said, I got it. I told you the seed of the righteous shall be saved. That I'll raise up a mighty honor, honor this heritage. Your inheritance is that these souls in your family be saved. In the mighty name of Jesus. I gotta hear it. I'm gonna say this. I'm hearing it. I'm moving as quick as I can here. Uh, London. Is there anyone, London, 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 that you're gonna be either going to London? Come on. Got one here? Where's another one? London. Come on. Come on. I'm not crazy. I know what I'm hearing. Let's go. Is this London? Come on. Yes. Come on. Come on. Come on. 
Lord said, didn't I tell you? I will show you great and mighty things that you know not of. Taking you out of here so cold. The enemy thought he had you locked in a certain life, a certain experience. But the Lord said, no, I'm going to launch your territory. And this is just the beginning of many, many trips. There's an itinerary that's so international for you. So international for you. There are select few that's supposed to go. Trusted armor bearers. Trained armor bearers. Faithful. I'm a bearer. Come on, let's go real quick. Get the mighty thing. I come against vertigo. That your body will be able to withstand the pressures and the changes of new atmospheres. So that you can do the work. The Lord said, such discernment I'm giving you to sense the Dalamato, because the Itama, that even as you all are walking down these streets, the Lord is going to along you and your spirit. Tell them to turn this way, turn them to turn that way. Just like open up your mouth. It'll be for the protection of the entire group. We give you praise for it, Father, in Jesus' name. I'm moving quick here for you. Come on. Hands lifted. Committed to the cause. No distractions. No distractions. Lord said, be careful of last minute changes. No distractions. No distractions. Somebody shout out, no distractions. Lord said, in this season, you got to be decisive. Too many have access to you. Too many have access to you. They know your heart. They know your mind. The spirits behind them want to get you distracted from the main assignment. Lord said, cut back. Cut back on how many people have access. Everybody don't need to know what's going on. Get quiet. Everybody don't need to know the next move that you're about to make. Everybody's not excited about the thing that God is about to do. Get quiet. Get quiet. In the mighty name of Jesus. And because of the obedience, the Lord said there's increase. There's increase for your faithfulness. Be faithful to so significant seed in this season into your leaders. What's up, man? I'm moving quickly. I need a possible yeah. Come on. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. I am the most high I saw you. I, I went on real quick one night and I, I saw her. I saw you. But when I, I, I saw you walk past the camera, I said, God, what in the world is that? My mom taught me years ago, she said, she said, no, no man after the flesh, always the spirit. And when I, when I saw you walk past the fire God, <laughs> the fire of God, the fire of God, Pyro, your fire starter. Fire starter. Fire starter. The Lord said, I'm about to turn up the embers. The color of the fire is for the turn. The Lord said, I'm giving you fresh fire.
the labor of fighting as hard as you did these last two years. The Lord said, I'm not going to allow you to be warned like that. Help. Help is not just on the way. The Lord said, the help is here. That even as it was for Gehazi that had to be told by Elisha, look on the hills. Lord, open up his eyes so he could see. The Lord said, open up your eyes. I'm surrounding you with warriors. I'm surrounding you with warriors. I don't, I don't, I don't know. There it is. Thank you, Holy Spirit. The, the connection to come against sex trafficking. The keys are being put into your hands. It's like you're going to be connected to a task unit that are going to begin to find the places that they're being held. The Lord said, don't worry about those that will try to call you a witch because of what you see and what you deserve. The Lord said, you see what you see. The Lord said, you will save not only them, but the babies that some of them have. Hands are lifted, let's go. Fully in Jesus' name. That's it. 